Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another glorious and beautiful and wonderful day. And it's a good day to open up and let's read right out of John chapter 5. Verse 37, <clears throat> Jesus himself spoke this and he says, The Father himself who has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one he has sent. You search the scriptures. So he was saying, you're searching the scriptures, what was written, but you don't even have the word abiding in you because you don't believe. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. These are they who bear witness of me. Yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. So he was telling the Jews at this time, whether it was Sadducees or Pharisees or whoever he was speaking to specifically, he was telling them, you are searching, at least claiming you're searching for the truth. You have this religious form and you all say, oh, we're, we're hunting, we're waiting for revival, we're searching for the truth, but you don't have it even abiding in you. The thing, the very thing you're claiming you're searching for, he's standing right in front of you. It's me, but you won't believe me. You wanted something other. You are reading the scriptures, searching for the truth, but you wanted something other than the truth because when the truth showed up, you said, no, 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 no. You get out of here. You're not what we're looking for. So what were they really looking for? He also said in Luke chapter 19 and verse 44, I will skip to the second half of it, but it says, uh, He's talking about a judgment to Israel, and he says, They will not leave one stone upon another within you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. They were not aware. The ones who are looking at omens and signs and at least claiming, putting up a show, saying they were looking for the truth, they were serving God, they didn't recognize the time of their visitation. There's a, a good reason he told us to take heed, to watch, and to pray. And so I ask, what does revival look like? What does an awakening look like? God has told us, you know, in times of prayer, uh, some years back now, I'm thinking of, it was time and time again, we would be praying, and the Spirit would speak to us, and He would tell us, it will be different than you think. We're always praying about revival, praying about, oh Lord, send your rain. And He would say, it's going to be different than you think. It's going to be different than you think. It's not going to be what you think it's going to look like. And I would go, okay, I need to get ready for something different than what I think it's going to look like. Because the question is, what am I looking for? Am I looking for something that I have? This is a tissue box, but am I looking for something I have put in a little box? And I say, oh, it's going to, it's got to be like this. I'm looking for this box. I'm looking for this thing that I've already packaged in my mind. I'm looking for this thing. Or am I looking for him? Am I looking for revival? Am I looking for an awakening? And I'm a am I looking for even uh, like politics? Am I looking for the guy who's got the right tie? Am I looking for the guy, you know, when I pray, oh Lord, send us a, a godly leader. Am I looking for the guy whose hair is parted just right? He wears the tie and he speaks in a certain way. He's been trained at Harvard. Or, or do I insist that he's got to be the guy who wears the sweatshirt? He's casual. He can't be of God if he's all stuffy like that with a tie and suit. What am I looking for? I'm looking for him. I'm looking for the answer. I'm looking for the truth. Not my interpretation of it to begin with. Not my plan. Not my, my personal slant. I need to have a personal relationship with the truth. So that when I recognize what he sends, I say, hey, I might not be used to that, but I know him. I know the uh, the earmark of my Savior. Like when people look at art and they're amazing art, you know, gurus or whatever, and they see different pieces of art and they say, that's got to be a whatever, a Pollock or a, a so uh, that's a Van Gogh. You can tell because of the style. I know him. I know him. It doesn't look like any of the other paintings, but I know him. Because I know his art, I know his style, I know his heart, right? It's kind of interesting because I was 
going back to when he says it will be different than you think. I remember that time when he said it once, and I thought, surely, of all groups of people, the, the church that I was in at the time would be ready. Surely we, he can't be talking to us, that we need to, we need to be ready, we need to get ourselves ready for, for what he's about to do. Oh, well, we're already ready. We're ready, Lord. Surely we're ready. Well, maybe we're not, because there have been plenty of changes since, plenty of changes in my own heart. He gets us ready. So we need to remember who we seek, not what it should look like. We need to remember we are seeking the Lord and be ready for our day of visitation. Be ready. Have our, our surfboard all waxed up, so to speak our body built up and ready to ride the wave of his spirit, ready to ride on anything that the Lord sends to us, anything he sends us in, be ready to be a part of anything he has and to embrace what God, what God works in us and what God works in the earth. Amen. Be blessed.